Hi guys, it's Janae and welcome back to my channel and today I'm doing something slightly different. I thought it would be nice to be able to do kind of like reviews and thoughts about books that I don't get a chance to do read-alongs for, movies and shows that I don't get the chance to react to for whatever reason, whether it's because of timing, because the show maybe is a little bit old, or just because I don't have the time in my schedule. So anyway, I hope you guys will enjoy it. If you do, then I would love to do this as like a monthly or bi-monthly thing. But generally, the idea is just to be able to give my thoughts on shows and movies and books that I really enjoyed, but for obvious reasons, didn't make it to the channel. This will also include things that are Patreon and membership exclusive that I just kind of also want to give my thoughts on here. In this video, I'm specifically going to be focusing on what I watched and read during the months of April and May. So yeah, with that said, before we do get into it, I just want to say a quick and as a thank you to my amazing patrons and channel members. And if you're interested in joining all of those for uncut and exclusive reactions, links will all be in the description below along with my social media and my PO box. And if you want to subscribe, that's always greatly appreciated. But now without further ado, let's get into today's video. Going first to what I read, I am going to be focusing all of this more on just Asian related media. So if you follow my read-alongs, you'll know that I finished up the fourth volume of Urha and it was absolutely glorious. I honestly think this is one of my favorite volumes so far, just because it had me crying the least of all the volumes. Like... All of them are gorgeous. I do love the way that Amit Bone writes. I think the characters are very compelling. But this was just like a little bit of chicken soup for the soul. You know, it really healed some of the many wounds that were opened in the previous volumes. So yeah, I just, I love this so much. Um, I do think Amit Bone has a really good way and I think also 70s with the way that they decided to publish this even though I so wish we could have just had one massive book so that I could binge read it. I do like the fact that it feels as if each volume is a bit of a heavier volume than a lighter volume than a heavier volume than a lighter one and now we're back to a heavier volume for volume 5. But yeah, I'm still really enjoying the story and that was definitely one of my favorite volumes. Then moving on to a manga, I always swore to myself I would never buy mangas. Like it was purely for online consumption via Billy Billy and so on because I read through them too quickly. And here I am with the first five volumes. These are the first three of the case files of Julia Richards and even though my wallet regrets everything my soul does not these are so beautiful like obviously visually speaking they're quite beautiful in my opinion I just I love it so much these aren't BLs like this is not a BL series but there is definite bromance here and I just love the characters so much it's the perfect balance of very wholesome but so much heart and soul and i just have such a deep connection to the characters it's so nice because it's not that these are absolutely fluffy reads with no substance but at the same time i n never feel like it's a burden to read it or that i'm not emotionally ready to read it um which is quite a feat for me because I have been going through some rough months emotionally where I have been more sensitive than I generally would be and I'm already quite a sensitive viewer and reader as it is. So being able to still read these and especially because I've been struggling to read for pleasure for so long, like the read-alongs have really helped me be able to sit down and find time to read again physically instead of just listening to audiobooks. But just actually having something that I'm willing to read before I fall asleep is so nice. So yeah, highly recommend and I already have the next two waiting for me which will probably be in the next reading wrap-up. So. If you guys want me to go into more detail with the plots of these uh, in future videos, if this one does well, 
I'm happy to do so, but I also like, I'm terrified of giving spoilers ever, so yeah. Then next, I have more of a question with regards to movies. So I did two movies for Patreon. Um, I technically did three, but the other one was not a Western thing. I, I think it was either Italian, I think it might have been an Italian movie, but it, it was not Asian. So hence why I'm not including that one. But the other two movies that I watched specifically for Patreon were not my favorite. And I kind of want to hear your guys' feedback. If I were to continue with these kinds of videos once a month, would you guys like me to also mention the shows and movies and novels potentially as well that I tried but that didn't work for me for whatever reason? Because I feel like I'm not the biggest fan of negative reviews um, when I have to give them, but at the same time they can be very helpful even if it means that you find something that was totally not my vibe but sounds like something that you would love so yeah uh let me know because the two that i watched was monster which is a japanese movie that i think came out in 2023 and creation of the gods one kingdom of storms and the other one was Creation of the Gods 1, Kingdom of Storms. Unfortunately, both of those weren't my favorite. I think Monster I preferred over Creation of the Gods, but I, I don't necessarily want to go into detail about those if that's not something you guys would be interested in. So yeah, let me know. I can even include a better review of it in the next video if it happens. Then, moving on to shows. I... <laughs> have been in a binging mood like i mentioned emotions were high i just wanted to watch a lot of feel good things and then ironically i did end up watching quite a few things that made me cry as well um but i just really enjoyed being in a binging mood again because that's not always something that i do especially with youtube being my job so firstly with regards to what i watched for patreon i after many months wrapped up a mysterious lotus casebook and that show like it's not technically a censored bl but it might as well be that's all i'm gonna say it was glorious i mean if you watched my reaction to the final episode you'll know how i feel about that but overall just such an enjoyable fun show the characters were so great so fleshed out they worked so well together and i thought the mysteries that they explored in the individual episodes were really compelling and unique i think they did a good job of making it believable but unpredictable at the same time. And again, I just, I adored the characters. There's three main characters. One doesn't show up as much as I would love him to, but all three of them had such an individual charm to them that just worked so well together. So highly recommend, even if it's not an actual censored BL, it really might as well be. And it's interesting because I feel like there's a lot of people who ship the three in different ways. So it's also cool because you can kind of take your pick. I feel that there's enough moments to go around with each of them that it works however you ship it. So anyway, <laughs> highly recommend, really enjoyed. And yeah, I, I can't really say anything more than that. Then the show that I did for my $5 and up to your patrons was oh no here comes trouble which is a modern setting taiwanese show and i just like highly recommend highly 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 recommend it is so much fun like it was again for me another one of those where there was so much heart to the show like the cases were very interesting I felt that the premise was unique and then also the fact that there was humor and emotion and it just blended together so seamlessly. Yet again, not a sense of BL or anything like that, but the bromance was strong in that one. Like I was genuinely surprised by how strong it was and it just again, the characters really were so compelling. I loved the 
mother figure that we had in this as well which was really kind of refreshing to see because I feel like with a lot of these premises it's a lot easier to not really focus in on the parents and the di dynamics between the parents and the children and the fact that she was such a strong compelling character as well I really enjoyed and yeah just the main trio was gold I really loved everything about that show i thought it had very much <laughs> i'm trying to to think it had what i'm expecting link click to also have in my opinion not in the same way necessarily but there was something about that and then also kind of a guardian vibe maybe dare i say um i don't know there was just a lot of elements that i feel if you enjoy a lot of the th shows that I've reacted to, you will definitely enjoy this and I'm so grateful that people recommended it to me because it's still in my mind, even now, a month and a half later. So, highly recommend. Then, the last two that I watched, just for the fun of it, was firstly, The King's Avatar, the live action version with Yang Yang. I did a once a reaction to it in, I think like, two years ago or something it was a ridiculously long time ago but yeah i did first impressions to it i never went back to it because i had convinced myself i would somehow find an excuse to be able to continue reacting to it whether it be here or on patreon and that never happened i finally caved i was like i'm in the mood for something different i want to check out and see how i feel about the rest of the show and i loved it i loved it so much like yes Sometimes the episodes dragged a little bit because it's a lot of repetition with the gameplay and things like that. But it was the weirdest thing because I remember distinctly going into the first episode thinking this was going to be similar to Sword Art Online um, where they're transported into the universe of the game and have to like do almost like a Hunger Games, you know, death battle kind of thing just to survive. And I'm so glad this is not it. This is very much more a sports anime, but with an esports premise. And I was living for every single second of it. It was so fun. It was so low stakes. And I know that sounds terrible to say, but it was a breath of fresh air with all the like death that I had watched on screen, just through all of my other shows that I still love. But it was just so nice to know that no one was gonna die in any of the given episodes. So. Highly recommend if you want something that is just very fun, the characters are very likable and enjoyable. I did take a moment to warm up to some of them, um, but overall, like Yang Yang really carried that performance. I was so pleasantly surprised by the fact that the main character was actually very happy go lucky. Because if you look at the anime's cover, and maybe the anime differs a lot in that respect. I want to check it out, but I haven't yet. I thought it was going to be a very dark and brooding show, and it just is not at all. Like, it still has a lot of emotions and things like that, but it, it just the fact that he was so happy-go-lucky and so positive and really, like, trying his best, and you could see there was a lot of struggle in it. It didn't feel like... He was coming at it uh, and it, everything was just easy. It just felt very compelling. And also, one thing that I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I did is the sportsmanship in that show. The fact that even though, yeah, there are some of the people that are a bit scummy, but overall, the competitors all really respect each other they see each other as equal they're very much like yes you beat me in a game but i still respect you and the craft and everything like that and that was really nice that was something that i also really enjoyed in Yuri on ice so kind of getting to see that same sportsmanship here as well was so lovely <laughs> I don't know why, but it just really caught me off guard in the best way possible. So yeah, I've talked enough about that. I uh, highly recommend as well. And then lastly, I watched a show called Lovely Runner, which is a Korean um, straight romance. And I was pleasantly surprised and kind of shocked 
because I looked at the cover for it and I looked at the title for it and I like I looked past it basically lovely runner it sounded to me like it was about a romance at school between two people who were on the track team and I mean if you that's something that interests you go for it but it just the there wasn't anything to the title that made me give it a second look and I'm very picky when it comes to my straight romances because there's so many to choose from um but yeah so I just looked at the title wasn't necessarily impressed by it and I kind of looked past it and then I got bored <laughs> I looked up the premise and suddenly it sounded a lot more interesting to this day having watched the entire series I don't know why they chose that title because it's totally misleading I could be generous and see like it's say it's because she constantly has to run after him in a you know non-literal way but anyway okay so title issues aside I thought it was a really good show I think the actors did an amazing job with that because it just oh there were some moments that like really had me bawling it was very emotional the premise if you don't want to know the premise you're just gonna go into it completely blind um skip this but if you want to know the premise the idea is that a girl travels back in time after an idol that she loves commits suicide and uh like damn it was i i watched that because that premise at the start felt so scarily real like the the idea of the the pain and suffering that idols go through that gets sometimes so ignored until it's too late i thought it was just a very interesting new take on a you know familiar concept of the time traveling to save your soulmate kind of thing and the way that their lives integrated i thought was really well done there were moments that really frustrated me where i felt as if um the male lead had his agency taken away because of some of the choices from the female lead but overall i really enjoyed it and i just think again the actors did an amazing job i thought the emotions were spot on and i really 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 liked the way that it all ended up coming together at the end i did again skip through some parts because unfortunately because of the way that the time travel works in this there were moments that felt a little bit repetitive or drawn out uh, where I felt like we're rehashing the same issues but like I would watch that again I'm probably gonna watch someone's reaction to it I just I really really enjoyed it overall and I think they did a really really good job with it and I, I'm low-key in love with the male lead the, they did such a good job of just everything about that it was so sweet anyway i was a sucker for it i really enjoyed it despite its flaws the music also was amazing i remember that but with all of that said that was my uh, brief sum up of the things that i read and watched in april and may i hope you guys found this helpful or interesting or anything like that but yeah i just i really wanted to talk about it because sometimes it's still so nice to just be able to talk to people about the things you're kind of obsessing about in the moment so yeah if nothing else this was cathartic for me and i hope you found some enjoyment in it i will be leaving the links for julia richards and erha in the description if you're interested in checking that out as well as the information for where to watch the other things that i mentioned if you're interested in that but otherwise i hope you have an amazing day and i'll see you in the next one bye